Hi, I'm Colin Smith from Photoshop Cafe, and I want to welcome you to our Lightroom 5 Beta training site. Adobe just announced Lightroom 5 Beta and is jam-packed full of great, exciting new features. So what I've done is I've compiled a little bit of a site here, and I've listed all the features on the website at photoshopcafe.com forward slash Lightroom. I've also got a series of videos here that I'm giving you for free that walk you through some of the new features, show you what they can do, and I also include a few little cool tips in there. So without further ado, let's jump in and have a quick overview here of Lightroom and look at what some of the new features are. And here we are looking at the Lightroom 5 public beta. And there's a number of new features, and I'm going to kind of skim over them a little bit, showing you some of my favorite features in this particular video. Now, I have other videos that are up on uh, YouTube and at photoshopcafe.com forward slash Lightroom that goes more in depth with some of these features. So one of the things that I like that's new is something known as Smart Previews. As you know, you have to have the photographs connected here in order to make adjustments. If they're disconnected like the photographs here, you can still change the metadata, but you can't make any adjustments. So what we've got this new option here, we've got a photograph select. And if we click here on it says original photo, it gives me an option to build a smart preview. And when I click that button, it will do that and then just click OK. And now it can show me because it shows I've got an original and a smart preview. Now you can do this on import. You can also go into preferences and batch process and to create these smart previews. But basically a smart preview creates a lossy DNG. So even if things are disconnected, we can actually make adjustments to the photograph by using this, this preview here, which is saved inside your Lightroom library. And without even having the originals connected, you can still use it for smaller things like web pages and emailing photographs and stuff like that. If you want to print the full size image, of course, you want to make sure that it is connected. So here's another option we've got that's new. It's known as the, uh, let's go under the view menu here, and I'm going to show you, we've got the, the loop. The loop overlay is new and if we go here you can see we've got this now if you hold down the command key you can actually move this around and change the uh, the guides here and the other thing if we hit the command key we can change the size of the squares we can also change the opacity of these squares so we can push them all the way up or all the way down and then you can see once again command we can move these guides around very very cool and useful and of course, we can also hide those at any time too, just by going under the view here. And we can do show or hide, or we can use command option O is another way of doing that. So let's look at another tool that I really like under the develop module. It's a kind of a fun tool. I'm sure you're familiar here. We've got our little um, brush here, but now this we've got a new option, which is the healing brush. So if we select this, which um, right now you'll see we've got an option here is the tool overlay. If we hit the A key, what happens is we can actually visualize now and try and find the spot. So we move it up and we see we've got a spot there. And this enables us to do our, our cleaning up. So if I'm just going to uh, zoom in a little bit here, let me just turn this off for a second and let's zoom in. And we're looking for the sensor dust right now. So there's that little bit of sensor dust that we found by going in there. And of course, we can just go and just click once now. And it's got this automatic mode, kind of like the uh, smart healing brush in uh, inside of Photoshop. But let's look at something that's going to show this off a little bit better. So I'm just going to zoom back out here and I'm just going to find another photograph. Let's go back to our library quickly. Scroll down here. And this is where it gets really cool is we can actually do some retouching with these. So let's zoom in here. And, uh, you know, if we want to change a different magnification, maybe we'll just go to uh, not quite that big. Let's go to, uh, I don't know, 1, 3, see what that looks like. There we go. That's better. So some of the things we can do, obviously, is we can just tap here and to do the healing. Now, if you don't like where that automatic point is, just hit the backslash key and we can resample and notice it'll move around until it can find a different sample. And we still have the options to clone or heal and change the opacity. But here's something that's really interesting and new is if we want to go and get rid of wrinkles, we just click and drag. And notice now as we get this dragging behavior, it actually creates a, a brush stroke. And of course, we can move this around and we can uh, go to heal these things. Now, if we want to hide our overlays, we can do that just by hitting the H key 
then we're just going to go into the opacity. So if we turn it all the way down, you can see we can start to go up a little bit and start to actually do some real retouching now where we can start getting rid of wrinkles and blemishes on our models. So that's a really, really cool option. I really enjoy that. And let's see some of the other tools we've got here. I'm going to select this photograph and we're going to go to the develop module and we'll just fill with that. So one of the things we can do here, uh, let's just choose it to fit completely, is some of the adjustments we've got here is known as the upright adjustment. So if we go here under the lens correction, you'll see under the basic settings right now, we've turned this off. So we can choose auto. And notice what it does. If I just hit the backslash key there, you can see the difference has been straightening that up. There's other options here where we can just do leveling if you want. The profile with the lens profiles. Uh, and it gets really crazy if you hit full. Look at that. It actually makes an oblique straight on. So if we look at that before and after, you can see it's quite radical. Let's look at another photograph to see the options maybe a little better. There's the auto. Or if we just use the level option, there we go, it just levels it out. We can use vertical, which cleans it up, or full. And you can see that is uh, takes the whole 3D perspective in there. And this is great if you want to create texture maps with 3D or just straightening photographs. Or maybe you want to create brushes that you can use with your tablet with some uh, custom brushes and stuff like that. So let's look at some other options here. Let's get out of here, go into the library panel. Let's grab another photograph really quickly. And one of the other ones we've got here is this radial filter. Let me find a good photograph to show this off. Here we go. So now if I want to uh, go in here under the develop, and then we'll see we've got the radial here, is if we take this and we can click and drag, and now we can actually create a shape, our own custom shape, and we can make you know changes in here we can play around and create a vignette kind of effect here where we can start to move things around we can manually change it if we command double click or control on windows right on that point there let's do that it will fill it and you can see we get these different kinds of options now we can also invert the mask so we can put this stuff around the outside or the inside. And you can see much more than just a vignette though. We can do so many other things here, you know, with this color saturation. Or if we actually work on a raw file, let me just go down and grab a raw file really quickly here. Let's grab this one. And uh, let's make some adjustments quickly, make some white balance adjustments here. Play around with the exposure. Let's recover some highlights. Now, if we grab our tool and we drag it, notice what it does is it constrains our adjustments inside our area there. And so that means that we can change some of the other things like the temperature on the outside. So everything here we're doing is now affecting the outside. See that? And of course, we can always invert it like we did. And then the adjustments we make now are going to be on the inside. And at any time, of course, we can select it um, and then just go down and make all our other overall adjustments, which you'll see will affect the overall image. So the other th uh, things that uh, new in Lightroom 5 is it now has support for PNG files, which are really great. Uh, if you ever work with pings, you'll find those quite useful. Uh, let's go down here. The other thing, we've got video options here. So here's videos. So what's so great about the video? Well, what if I select two video clips here? I select one and two. You know, we can edit video as we know, but we would never be able to put them together. But now if we go into the slideshow feature here, and we actually, we've got two selected now, and we preview, you'll notice that it'll actually play this video now. And then when it gets ready to go, there we go, it'll fade into another video right there so we can actually do some very very basic uh, video editing right inside of Lightroom which is pretty amazing I mean I find that like quite an exciting uh, quite an exciting option here's another option we have a true full screen hit the F key and we can actually look at our photograph in full true full screen there which is nice and then another option let me find the photograph with a little more colors in it here is when we're inside the histogram here once it's calculated and we're and we're going into the develop here 
And you know, when we move over our photographs, you can see different things. Now, if we right click here, we now have the option to show lab color values. So now as we're scrolling over the photo, you can see the LAB, which is lightness, the A and the B channel. If you don't work too much in lab, what you will find useful though is the lightness. So this is showing the percentage of lightness. If we go up here, we can see, okay, it's 92. Up here is 94 and you can see that so we can work there, or of course we can go back and roll over and show RGB values. So as I said, if you want to see these features in a little bit more detail, I'm going to actually get into detail with some of my favorite ones and really get in and show you how they work, how to use them, and some keyboard shortcuts and a few little tips and tricks on them. So this is Lightroom 5 Beta.